Um, this is take two of the vid here, and I'm probably going to try and keep this short because I just recorded the entire thing, and about halfway through, three quarters of the way through, my dog just went crazy and ruined the entire thing. Um, and so I had to stop and, and, and kill it. So uh, here we are. I've gone through the games uh, several times already, personally. Um, so we're going to try and keep this a little bit short here today, and now that we are um, we're getting into the early afternoon... Uh, we want to get this out as soon as possible for you. So early projections are up on the site, as they are always. Um, we're not even going to do a quick overview here today. We got Strider on the mound and Kershaw, and those are really your two best arms. But you got some tournament pieces that you can get to for sure. And obviously we have uh, Pittsburgh and Colorado once again, Vince Velasquez and Jose Arrani on the mound there. Um, you got to get this game right once again. Um to win in tournaments uh, just as we needed to get it right uh, last night. So um, let's just get into the games here quickly. We'll try and keep things keep things quick. Um, okay, let's start with the Angels and the Yankees. No pitching on the mound here for me today. Jose Suarez, he's not been good, and uh, we don't want to be going after a neutral ground ball to fly ball guy in Yankee Stadium on the negative end of, pl of a platoon split against the Yankees who hit – who have about 42 right-handed hitters, and every single one of them has power. Um, doesn't take a lot to hit it out of Yankee Stadium, and uh, Josie Suarez has really not been good in the early going here. Just a 21.5% K rate for him in aggregate over his last 117 and a third. A um, little susceptible to the right side. 275 average, 339 WOBA, 175 ISO. Just a 22 percent K rate we're here which is pretty average 30 percent hard contact and as I mentioned an 095 ground ball to fly ball to righties so much better against lefties so we don't really want like a, a Rizzo or anything um, but he will still give up a little bit of contact and historically Jose Suarez has been a reverse split when he came up he actually exhibited a lot more of a weakness to the left side of the plate and gave up more power there he since fixed that with the uh, introduction of a slider but Nevertheless, um, not my favorite to go after a, a one-off Anthony Rizzo or anything like that, uh, as we have games for the early slate rolling in. Um, 4,500 is a workable piece in stacks, however. So if you want to get to the Yankees, they're going to be off the board today because you got two gajillion percent ownership coming to uh, Pittsburgh and Colorado. We'll get to that in a minute. So no pitching on the mound. Same thing for Clark's. Clark Schmidt on the other side, 6,300. He's probably only going to go three, four innings maybe. Um, and these numbers for him, while encouraging on the surface, uh, they're a little noisy because most of his appearances have come out of the bullpen. So these are all situational and mostly set up against right-handers. So he's got excellent numbers in those situations. Uh, against righties, but uh, very susceptible against lefties for sure. 313 average allowed, 392 Woba, and a 214 ISO with a 1.6 homers per nine. So no thank you. That puts us into Shohei Otani territory, um, but you can play some of the righties as well because these normal these numbers will normalize um, as he gets more times through the rotation and sees each of these lineups a full one time and every hitter in them, that's righties and lefties, and maybe even two times. Um, so that's probably as, as deep as he'll go at 6,300. He's just uh, he's overpriced for us. Um, now, if the if the Angels run out a fully right-handed lineup, they sit Shohei or something crazy, and sit Renhifo, and um, don't deal with any of the Brett Phillips stuff or whatever they're going to do from the left side of the plate, then you could consider it. If he were a lot cheaper, but he's at 6,300, so I don't think we can do this. Uh, just give me the Yankees here and some Shohei and some Trout. Uh, you can play some Angels pieces and, and go after what's likely to be a bullpen game in a, in a small stadium, um, even though the Yankees or the Angels rather have been terrible this season. Baltimore and Washington. Dean Kramer on the mound and Josiah Gray on the other side for the Nats. Um, no thank you on Dean Kramer. He's not been good this series this season. Uh, the suppression metrics are, are just not there. And he's pitching to way too much contact, as he always has, and 17% K rate, as he's always had. So he stays off the barrel, which is nice, and throws strikes, which is nice, but he throws too many strikes, and he can't throw it past anybody, right? So um, he's p pitching to way too much contact, and despite the Nationals being a pretty low upside offense in general, 
Um, I think we can get to some of these pieces today. Joey Manessa's down cheap. Dom Smith is 2,600 or something, uh, I believe. Let's check. Uh, yeah, in the two-hole, uh, you can get to Alex Call, top of the lineup. Jamer has not been a total corpse uh, to start the season as he normally is against right-handers. So uh, 3,400, he's got some pop still. And Luis Garcia has been great at second base. He's 2,200. You can you can drop it all the way down to the six-hole, play Caver Ruiz behind the plate if you want to get to full five-man national stacks as a really off-the-board play. Probably don't need full five-man nats, but uh, Dean Kramer's not been good. Um, and... Overall, maybe he'll be able to go like a five, six innings and, and suppress the Nats here, which would really take me off of the off of the full stacks because I, stu I do still kind of respect the suppression upside that Dean Kramer exhibits. But, um, you know, admittedly, he has not been good this season. 6,200, it's an intriguing price tag. I'd like him a little bit cheaper uh, because this strikeout rate is just like, man, on full slate, it's very hard to get to this. Um, as an SP2. Jojo Gray on the other side, um, he's maybe trying to figure it out a little bit here, but uh, he's going to have to show me a little bit more than two starts, one of which against the hapless Rockies, who strike out at, you know, hitting off a tee, um, for me to get convinced here. He needs to quit throwing this four-seamer so much. It is a terrible pitch for him. Uh, he is right directly on the barrel. He When he does throw it for a strike, he can't throw it for a strike all that often, and he's really only got the breaking stuff that he's mostly relying on here, full 50% in the arsenal at, I mean, this is this is huge here. And it looks like we're missing some data. So he's throwing another pitch somewhere. Um, maybe not. Uh, math is hard, I, I suppose. Um, so this four-seamer is just really what's been burning him and where he's giving up all of the power. 265 average to left, he's not horrific. It's pretty bad. 408. Woba to lefties is really bad. That's buoyed in part by a 15% walk rate to the left side. But a 315 ISO to lefties still uh, and a 23% K rate. 3.2 homers for nine. No, thank you. Way too many fly balls. Way too many barrels. 10.5%. This is a huge number for a starting pitcher. Can't throw strike one because he can't spot the fastball. Slider and, and the curveball have been okay, but he needs to throw the four-seamer less. Move over to a cutter or something. And that'll help him suppress some of the power because he gives it up to the right side too. 200 ISO and a 1.7 homers per nine there. So give me give me the O's here definitely. Um, they're probably going to be a little bit off the board given how much ownership is going to come to Coors and some of the other stacks. So they're expensive. You're still going to have to pay for them. Um, you know, 55 for Cedric I think is perfectly attainable. 54 for Rutsch, perfectly fine. 47 for Mountcastle, also fine. Santander, really need him to start heating up again, but this is a good price tag to start uh, accumulating some of him and, and just playing him every day. Austin Hayes has popped 39. Gunner, he's been super cold to start the season, but this is a good spot for him to get going. Uh, 3,800, I like this. They've dropped him down to the 7 now, so he's he's really not going to be played. So I like getting to the O's here um, in addition to the Yankees as kind of off-the-board stacks. Uh, and definitely no pitching for me. Even JoJo... With a 23% K rate, I'm not doing it uh, against a really good lineup that I respect. Okay, Sonny Gray and Chris Sale on the mound for the Twins and the Sox. 8,600 for Sonny Gray, who's been pretty damn good this season. There's variance with Sonny, and I like getting to that in tournaments a lot of the time. Uh, still has really good stuff, 24, 25% K rate even. Throwing strikes, stays off the barrel, and gets some good ground balls to the right side. He's always had really good K stuff to both sides of the plate, and that really hasn't changed. 136 and two thirds, and he's he's really excellent. I do, all all these numbers are great. The only thing that's slightly worrisome for me is a 33% hard contact rate to righties, but it really doesn't translate to any power. 229 average, 299 woba, and a 129 iso to the right side. Doesn't walk people, stays on the ground. A um, little bit more susceptible to fly balls to lefties, but has a good four pitch mix. And a little bit of a show-me change in a fifth pitch to neutralize the lefties. Four-seamer, sinker, slider, curveball mostly. Curveball has always been really good, still really good. Four-seamer always been pretty good, still pretty good. So um, very workable four- and five-pitch arsenal for him here, and that makes him really intriguing in tournaments. Boston, however, hasn't been striking out at all this season. Just a, let's see here, um, against uh, against righties here. Um, we have a, 
an 18% K rate um, so far. I've got a little bit of a discrepancy in my numbers here. Um, so this this says 25%. That is not right. Uh, it's actually 18%. So um, nevertheless, I've got to fix the sheet, but they have been sticky and and getting to some guys. So I think you play both sides here. Overall, I'd side, I'd side with Sonny Gray at very low ownership here. The pro, the median projection so far, 12, 13 points, looks pretty low um, as, a, as a median outcome. Uh, I do like getting to, of course, some Rafi Devers. You can always play him at 6K. Uh, it's not great, but um, it's fine. Uh, Masataki Yoshida at, at 4,700. This is fine, too. Tristan Casa still cheap, 2,500. Uh, you can play him as well if you want to get to some of these lefties. Um, but really, I don't want to go out of my way to target... Uh, certainly not playing Rymel Tapia. Like he's a contact hitter, doesn't have any real upside. But if he's 2,200 leading off, you're probably going to get some of him. Um, this is the late lineup, I believe, for for Boston after the rain delay yesterday. So a lot of noise here, I think. But uh, he'll probably be on the bench, Will Tapia. So I wouldn't take a lot out of that. It'll almost certainly just be Verdugo at the top of the lineup, to be quite honest, uh, against a righty. And I don't really want to play that at 4,500, to be quite honest. So give me some Sunny Gray, but give me a little bit of Devers um, and some Yoshida to uh, to hedge that uh, exposure. I like getting to Sunny in tournaments. Um, Chris Sale on the other side, still variance with Sale. Still having trouble spotting the fastball and throwing strikes. Uh, but the K stuff is still here. 27% so far in the, in the early going, 17 and two-thirds. It's fine. Um, but he's on the barrel here. He's pitching to, you know, when he pitches to contact he pitches to way too much hard contact 50 percent to the left side three and a third innings let's let's slow down that's total noise but 38 39 percent hard contact to, to righties this is starting to converge a little bit uh even though it's 75 hitters 75 hitters 75 hitters and 40 percent hard contact rate is 40 percent you can't really fake it so um giving up a lot of power so far and he's still giving up some runs despite the fact that the k stuff is there I think we can also play both sides here. You can play Chris Sale. I don't like this 15% ownership on him uh, on a full slate. It's probably a little bit stiff for my like for my liking. I'd like to come in maybe 10%. I think that's okay. Price tag hasn't really changed for Sale, so market, including DK, uh, are not totally sold on what they want to do with him just yet. Um, so I think as a median projection, maybe eh, it looks okay, maybe a tick high. Uh, because there's so much variance that comes with him and being able to just throw it over the damn plate. Um, so I like getting to a couple of twin stacks here. You can play Buxton. He's eventually going to run into a baseball. Um, hopefully he does that before he runs into a wall. 5000 for Buxton, that'd be nice. Um, I, I, I like that price tag. Carlos Correa, 4600 You can play this. Donnie Solano, 2100 Josie Miranda, 30, or excuse me, 2,900 for him, 2,800 as a decent play behind the plate. Ryan Jeffers, you'll probably get this, uh, a decent bit of him. In the last hour or two, uh, since I recorded the first time, um, the total came in here and got whacked. So uh, it's 55 degrees in Boston, not the best hitting weather, of course, but still a good hitter's park in Fenway. And I think you play pretty much everybody in this game. I would mostly side with the Twins offense against Sale. But I like getting to some of Chris Sale as well, and mostly Sonny Gray against Boston. But you can play a couple of these guys over here because there's still some variance with Sonny. Interesting game here. I think you'll have to get that right in tournaments. Uh, Texas-Kansas City. This was a really frustrating game last night, pretty much all the way around. Um, obviously, DeGrom came out after four innings. He was going to, like, he had 18 points or whatever through four innings. He was going to put up a 40 ball last night. Um hurt his wrist. Uh, Texas really didn't get there against Jordan Lyles. He was an interesting tournament play at 5,400. He can suppress sometimes, as can Brad Keller, as he did in his last start in this very same matchup against Texas. Um, another interesting spot. Not sure if we can get to Keller again. I, I really just don't like playing him. It was a shorter slate, I believe, um, when Keller tore apart the Rangers in his last outing, put up 28 DK points, struck out six or seven or something in six and a third. Uh, really good outing from him. But this is the same matchup, and I generally don't like targeting pitchers in back-to-back -back matchups against the same team. Um, it's usually... The the offense is usually favored in, the, in those scenarios. So um, I, I, however, would like to 
probably target Nathan Eovaldi again. 7,800, I... Okay, the price is coming down, so this is more encouraging. However, hard contact rates are still up. Uh, played the Royals against him in his last start. So same, same thing for him. He's getting the exact same matchup as well. And the Royals have actually seen him, I think, three times in the last three weeks. Uh, one of those being the last start of the spring, or one of the last starts of the spring, certainly the last start for Eovaldi of the spring, and they tore him up there too. So he gives up too much power, way too much hard contact, 39% to lefties, 37% to righties. It's on the barrel, 9.5%, and it's in the air, and it it goes over the wall. Uh, So no thank you to both sides of the plate. 251 average, 331 Woba, 226 ISO to lefties. Sure, he's got a 26% K rate, but I don't care. He pitch into 39% hard contact um, to lefties, like, these guys have to strike out a crap load for me to really get interested there. There's too much susceptibility. Now, at very low ownership, I think this is an interesting tournament piece now that his price tag is coming down a little bit. Um, you can occasionally play pitchers against against stacks that they've seen or against teams that they've seen multiple times. Because eventually they're going to get one right. And he still has good strikeout stuff. And this is still the Royals, okay? So we saw last night that they only had one, they got one hit. Um, but I would like to go to him again and play some Vinny Pascantino, 3,600. His price tag hasn't changed. Play some Kyle Isbell at 2,800. Good pop here, good speed. And he's hitting in the five hole, bookending a lot of okay contact hitters and guys that are going to make some hard contact. Bobby Witt, 51. This is a fine playable piece here at this price tag against Diavaldi and these contact numbers. You can play MJ for sure. Not crazy about this price tag, definitely, uh, at, at 4,700, but he's fine. So you can get to the top five. Again, it would probably stay off the bottom half of the lineup as usual, but you can get to the top five and, and stack the Royals against Diavaldi. He just gives up too much power. Keller on the other side we talked about. I don't really want to play him generally, and certainly not on full slates, but I also don't generally like stacking against him because it doesn't get blown up all that often. He's got a high, high ground ball rate, and despite the fact that he can't throw strike one, 54%, and walks some guys, he's still got a really good, I I say really good, he's got a league average slider relative relative to, um, you know, all the other pitchers, but it keeps him out of trouble because he, he can throw marginal fastball mixes here with a four-seamer sinker cutter, adding to that the slider, and and keep him out of trouble a little bit. But mostly it's the ground balls. He gets all of the the contact, whether it's hard or not, is really on the ground, and and you're not overly worried about that when they're hitting baseballs into the ground. So um, that's generally why I don't like stacking against Keller and probably why I'll stay off of the the Rangers again today in full stacks. You can play Nate Lowe again, sure, at 4,500. It's not bad. Uh, you can play Josh Young again, 3,700. Got into a ball, got to Lyles last night. Not bad at all. Jonah Heim, fine, 3,200 hits from both sides behind the plate. It's okay. And if you want to play Jankowski at 25 or Leody Tavares, or I would probably stay off of Josh Smith. He's been awful. Um, you could play a Leody down here. He's actually an okay hitter. Uh, down at the bottom of the lineup. Semyon, of course. Um, So you can get to some guys here, but not my favorite stack. Overall, pretty low upside. If Adelise Garcia is back in the lineup, that, of course, increases their upside quite significantly. But even still, um, you know, they'll hit, the righties will hit for some average, like a Semyon and, and a Garcia. 289 average, 343 Woba, 136 ISO, but not a lot of power there, right, uh, against Keller. So uh, not my favorite stack, probably just some one-off pieces in this game. I do like the Royals, however, targeting some Eovaldi. And if you want to get to a 7,800 Eovaldi, he does have the K stuff, and this is still the Royals. Uh, okay. D-backs and the Cardinals. Dre Jameson probably only going to go about four innings here today. 25% K rate. Really good stuff there. Good four-seamer, good sinker, good slider, but he's having trouble getting ahead in counts. 53% strike one rate so far. Short sample, just 36 and two-thirds. Not totally translating to a, a ballooning walk rate just yet, but that will be worrisome and, and troublesome for him. Uh, if he can't get this figured out. But uh, has good K stuff, 25% really to both sides, and really no power susceptibility or anything to both sides just yet. However, giving up a lot of hard contact, 41% to the lefties and 35% to the righties. 
73 PAs to either side of the plate, so that's a little concerning. Um, not concerning. I mean, it's just a, a small sample. But the, the hard contact number, definitely concerning. And not something we want to be messing with in general with the Cardinals. Certainly at 7,100, and if he's only going to go four innings or whatever, um, we're not going to deal with that. But this is a young arm, young promising arm with a good workable arsenal so far that could anchor their rotation, be a top two starter for them uh, in the future. So they're going to take care of him, probably not going to let him go all that deep. And this is a bad strikeout matchup in general against the Cardinals, of course. Uh, they've been attackable, but eventually they're just going to explode on you. And today could very well be one of those days. Uh, Wilson Contreras behind the plate, finally starting to take some more pitches and put together some more intelligent at-bats. So that's encouraging. Uh, 4400 the playable price tag. He won't be in the three today. Goldschmidt should be back. Um, so you're going to have to pay for him and Arenado, definitely. But Brandon Donovan, price coming down a little bit. Still 46 and elevated. Not crazy about that. But Alec Burleson got into a ball yesterday. Maybe starting to heat up a little bit for him as well. 4100 still playable price for him, I think. 42 for Nolan Gorman, also playable. Lars down here at 39. Eh, not crazy about that. Uh, we'll see what they want to do uh, with the lineup. They've got a lot of pretty versatile guys here that they can move around against righties. So uh, we'll see. But in tournaments, I think you can get to an off-the-board Cardinal stack, definitely, with some variance that's likely not yet reared its head for Dre Jameson. Throw an early strike. I love this kid. I love this arm. He's got gas. But if he can't throw strikes, you're going to have you're gonna have problems. And if you're throwing it to the barrel and giving up this much hard contact, you're going to have problems, especially when you're putting people on base if you put people on base. So you can get to the Cardinals. Eventually, they're going to explode. We talked about that with Houston. Just so happens that they did it against Gosman, one of the better arms in the league. Uh, on the mound for the Cards, 9,500 for Jordan Montgomery. I think we need to kind of slow down a little bit. Um, you know, we, we like playing him in, in the mid-8Ks or whatever, uh, but as soon as he, he pops to 9,500, you got a $1,200 price bump. Um, and, and that's a little concerning because... The Diamondbacks here in the early going, not striking out really at all. 21% strikeout rate um, for the D-backs against lefties this year. Short sample, of course, just 200 PAs, but uh, you know they're going to be a little bit sticky. They got some righties over here that can that can make it difficult on you. Cattell Marte is a very very good hitter, still underpriced. Um, Lord S is, is okay from the left side, or excuse me, from the right side against lefties. Uh, he's fine. Christian Walker, a lot of power here for, at 3,400. They also have um, a Gabby Moreno behind the plate. It's got some pop, and they have a Evan Longoria, who they will mix in at third base as well. Um, so they've got some workability over here and guys that can platoon and, and hit lefties pretty well. That's definitely the downside of the split for Montgomery. 239 average, not so much there. 302 Woba, not so much there. 160 ISO, not crazy bad, but you know slightly elevated. 20% strikeout rate there to righties. Uh, you don't want to deal with any of the lefties against him. He's always been elite against left-handers. 33% K rate there. Um, had huge, huge ground ball rate. One and a half ground balls per fly ball uh, to both sides. Huge ground ball rate to the lefties, I mean to say. 2.3 ground balls per fly ball. Uh, in that metric, 1.4 to the righty. So he'll give up a few more fly balls to the right side, less swing and miss, and a little bit more hard contact, 30% to the right side, as opposed to 24% to the left side. So a little bit more susceptible. Not that he's a bad arm or anything, but we've got Strider, we got Kershaw on the mound, and both more expensive and both in probably a little bit better spots. Uh, Arizona, not, you know, not the Mets that Kershaw gets. Uh, he's not the the Padres that Strider gets. So, you know, he's got that going for him, which is nice. And at 10% ownership, I think you can get some of him. I do not like the price tag at all. Uh, so I think you could play some pieces, both sides of this. I don't, I'm not sure I want to come in at like a 20% Montgomery or anything like that, but I also don't want to come in with 15% of the D-backs. Um, so I think that's kind of how I'd, how I'd approach it. Mostly the Cardinals, um, but really not super interested there. I'd really like Trey Jameson. Uh, don't like his price tag, though, and he's not going to go deep enough. And some Jordan Montgomery, some of the D-backs. All right, Toronto and Houston. Uh, Chris Bassett and Jose Arquiti on the mound. Uh, 8,200 for Bassett. Ay, ay, ay. No thank you. I just, 
I don't think the upside is there for him anymore. He's just throwing a lot of junk, and none of it's really any good. I mean, the sinker's still fine. The cutter's okay. I, I like stop throwing this slider. Stop throwing this changeup. Stop throwing the four seamer, because they're all really bad value for him. And just focus on the sinker cutter uh, curveball mix. Um, not sure if that would really translate to a lot of whiffs for him anymore, but like. He still has 25% K rate to the left side. It's not because of a good changeup, and it's really not because of a a good back foot slider that he's got to lefties. Um, you know, so it's, it's really most of the curveball. It's a good 12-6 curve. So not uh, not super crazy about the arsenal that he's exhibiting over the last couple of seasons. Uh, and he gets Houston today, who really kind of broke out against Gosman last night, who didn't have it. We talked about that Um it, there's variance with Gosman. If he can't go deep into a game, he starts spiking the splitter. Um, now it turns out he was up a little bit last night. And he, he didn't have any of it. Um, but there's there's variance when you pay those kinds of price tags for, for pitchers that don't generally go super deep into games. And Houston, we talked about them only having a 105 aggregate ISO split adjusted against right-handers this season. That was bound to correct at some point and this this lineup is too good they have been striking out at a quite alarming clip against righties so far this year 24 percent so far but once again to just a 105 iso and only creating at a 96 wrc plus so um worrisome for sure that 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 Bassett doesn't have any strikeout stuff, and that Houston could be waking up a little bit. So I don't really want to target Bassett here. Um, no thank you. It's not like he's got overly attackable stuff to either side. I mean, definitely want to get to him with lefties more so than righties. Um, better, certainly, with the with the, the sinker-cutter curveball against right-handers. Um, but giving up a 192 ISO and a 25% K rate, 1.6 homers per nine to the left side. That's Jordan Alvarez. That's Kyle Tucker territory. Now, do you want to pay 6500 and 5800 for him? I'm okay paying 65 for Jordan, 58 for Kyle Tucker. He's a good hitter, and I like this kid, but maybe a little bit aggressive. Uh, in this particular matchup, it's probably fine. Um, it's probably fine. But you can get to Alex Bregman, 4,800, not super wild about that necessarily. But the strikeout rate for Bassett, two right-handers, uh, the whiff stuff just isn't quite as high as it is to lefties. So you could you could play an off-the-board Astro stack again. Plenty of power here. Corey Jolks, uh, he had a bomb last night. Jake Myers also got to Gosman. But, but Jolks has a lot of power. He was really seeing the baseball yesterday. You could tell that he was very confident at the plate. And... Those are the kinds of guys at cheap price tags that we want to jump on. So he can be a good piece, a lot of power here for him. High, high upside hitter uh, going forward for the Strohs. So you can get to a couple of pieces down here against Chris Bassett. Uh, Jose Arquiti, we're not going to be doing doing this either. I don't. I very rarely play this guy. And a 20% K rate, I'm not dealing with that against the Blue Jays. Um, 8100 I don't like the price. And I mean, he's not going to be played, so... Sure, could he suppress for six innings and strike out five or something? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I suppose. But, um, I mean, on my best day, I could probably do that too. So, we don't really want to be dealing with this against a very high upside lineup uh, in Toronto. Now, do we want to stack them? I mean, I don't want to pay 5700 for Bo Bichette. This is not Mike Trout over here, and you got to pay the same price for him. Uh, Vladdy Guerrero, 55 I like that a lot better. Uh, same price as, I believe... Austin Riley, who we'll get to later. Um, so perhaps an interesting pivot. I mean, Riley's not going to be played much, but interesting price pivot for two pretty damn good hitters. Uh, and obviously, they're at different positions, but uh, we're just talking raw prices here. Um, so 55 for Vladdy, I think, is fine. He's not going to strike out. He's going to hit a lot of balls on the line here. And that's kind of what we want against an 080 ground ball to fly ball guy in, in Josie Arquiti. Uh 50% on the four-seamer. And, and throwing a slider curveball change mix here uh, really with neutral value on pretty much all of it. So um, the whiff stuff is not there. He does throw strikes, but he's on the barrel a little bit, and he's a fly ball pitcher, giving up 1.9 homers per nine and a 193 ISO to the right side of the plate. That's mostly how we want to attack here. He's a little bit better, at, at least in terms of homers, to the lefties, but still giving up a 182 ISO. So I think you can play pretty much everybody from, from the Jays over here. 
Um, like I said, not stoked about paying 57 for a Bo Bichette, but high aggregate projections so far, sneak peek behind the behind the paywall for these guys. Um, this isn't their lineup, of course, but Springer at, at 52, I do like. Will make this a little bit more palatable. Matt Chapman, 48, has been seeing the baseball. Uh, we talked about it yesterday being a bad batted ball matchup, but uh, you know when you're hitting beach balls, it doesn't really matter. Brandon Belt, 2100 now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks awful at the plate, and he did get called out on a ball that was about six inches out, outside last night. But you know, whatever. Um, so he's a playable piece. Kevin Biggio, no thank you at 2600. But he's a lefty. If you want to throw that into your stack or something, would probably rather play Kiermaier. But not wild about this price tag. So there's there's guys that you can get to, but you're gonna have to make somebody, um, you know, make a bad decision here, a tough decision, and play either Vladdy and pay the 5500 for a far better hitter or pay the 2100 save 34 and and play Brandon Belt at first base instead. So kind of difficult to stack there. Uh, wish they had a bit more positional uh, maneuverability, but uh, give me the Blue Jays for sure against Josie Arquiti and no pitching on the mound pretty much at all here in this game for me. Uh, prefer offense. Okay, we're going to prefer offense here as well. I'm trying to get through this as quickly as possible. Um, 6,400 for Vince Velasquez is just a non-starter. I'm not doing it. He gives a way too much hard contact, 35% to both sides of the plate, 166 ISO to lefties, 192 ISO to righties, uh, no strikeouts to right-handers, uh, just a 19% K rate. He's not going to walk people, but he's going to give up baseballs in the air and on the barrel. Full 13% barrel rate here. Uh, no thanks. That, that's not happening. I know that uh, Rich Hill, the it did really tore apart the Rockies because this offense is bad, man. They are so undisciplined at the plate, and they've got, I don't know, <laughs> one good hitter in here anymore. Like, Blackman is okay, but he's been terrible. Uh, but Chris Bryant's their only, like, major league hitter anymore. McMahon has been awful for about a season and a half. Uh, Ellerice Montero strikes out, and like way too much very young hitter here Jonathan Daza doesn't have any upside Zeke Tovar is 21 years old um it will have he will be their future leadoff hitter but it, that day ain't today uh CJ Crone has is like three for his last 50 or something uh, so he's been very cold as well so if you want to go after just a, a regression type of bounce with the Rockies they've been so awful uh, they're not going to be this bad all season They'll, they're going to be bad, don't get me wrong, and they're going to strike out a lot, don't get me wrong, but they're, they're not this bad. They've been so, so cold. Um, not a lot of raw upside for them outside of Coors, but they got a lot of upside at their home ballpark uh, against a guy that's going to throw it to them on the barrel and just kind of put it there. He's not going to strike him out a whole hell of a lot, maybe a little bit more so the lefties, um, but Charlie Blackman doesn't strike out all that much. And in his latter years here, the power has is, is kind of been sapped. He's much more of a contact hitter. Um, but Jerry Profar is going to make some okay contact. Ryan McMahon will strike out, but he's got probably the most, he's definitely the most pop from the left side anymore. Um, so we'll see what they want to do. You might see like a Harold Castro in the lineup today uh, against Vince Velasquez because Buddy doesn't really play numbers. He plays momentum. And all of these guys, momentum is tanking right now so um who knows what they're going to do with the lineup but you can get to the rockies again hopefully their ownership will come down a little bit because i would like to play them again uh, i'll just go broke playing the rockies at coors field when they're when they're all this cheap um you know leadoff hitter at coors as a switch hitter from you know at 3600 is just a you know it's just an auto play i don't care who it is uh we saw very cheap guys for the pirates go off last night right so it doesn't matter who it is the the ballpark plays up power and it plays up upside and these guys are just underpriced for their relative upside so you're unfortunately just gonna have to play them again um at high ownership you're just gonna have to eat it you can get different with it definitely um and that's not really too hard on a full 11 or 12 game however many game slate that we have today um the real problem is going to be Pittsburgh on the other side, and they their prices actually came down, and with a few of these guys, um, Brian Reynolds in particular, Carlos Santana, I think his price came down, but everybody else literally stayed the exact same, and they, now they get a better matchup today against Jose Arrania, who's going to throw it by them even less often than than Kyle Freeland, 
and I, I would say in aggregate against righties, uh, it's probably going to be the, the more solid side of the split for the Pirates. They've got a lot of switch hitters over here, a lot of guys that will hit from hit from the left side of the plate. Jiwon Bay, he's going to steal 26 bases um, probably tonight alone. Uh, Rody Castro hits from both sides. Carlos Santana hits from both sides as well, as does Brian Reynolds. So they, they still have a lot of workable pieces over here, even when they're missing O'Neal Cruz. So um, you got to pay for Kutch and Reynolds still, but like it doesn't matter when the other guys are totally free. So they're going to be 20 25% owned once again, and it's warranted. Uh, you're just going to have to figure out how to navigate this game once again. Pretty frustrating that, that DK keeps jacking around like this, and they just won't elevate the price tags of everybody playing at Coors Field. I mean, the, the run totals at Coors Field, and we've got a decade of, two decades uh, of experience here about elevated, with elevated run totals at Coors Field, and nearly a decade of, of DFS data, too, and they just won't increase the prices. Very frustrating. So you got to stack this game in cash for sure. Um, but in tournaments, I mean, you, you got to get different and get some pieces. Definitely don't don't fade any of these guys, even though the Rockies have been so bad. But uh, you, you got to figure it out. And, um, you know, it makes makes for interesting tournament decisions, but uh, difficult tournament decisions nonetheless. Uh, let's move on. Milwaukee and Seattle. Uh, Colin Ray's getting his second start through the um, for the Brewers here. Now, he came up and he was excellent in his last appearance against San Diego with six innings, struck out six or seven or something. Uh, was really, really good. So he at 6,700 now is not so good. He was 4,000 in his in his last outing. Um, and now he gets some Mariners. Uh, also a difficult matchup, but uh, probably want to be getting to uh, to the Mariners today instead of Colin Ray at this price tag. Um, could he suppress for five innings? Strike out five again? Yeah, sure. Uh, we don't have any data here um, outside of the minors for him, like, his last appearance was the first one that he had made in the big leagues outside of one spot start two years ago uh, since 2020, right? So not a lot of data on Colin Ray, but his stuff looked really good. Slider was fantastic um, against the against the Padres in his last outing. So uh, had you go know, through a lot of the sinker, a lot of the cutter, not so much value on the four-seamer, of course, but, like, whatever. He saw 19 hitters. Um, so we don't want to judge value here, but we can – gauge how often he, he chose to go to each of these pitches. Um, there will be some noise, of course, and miscategorizations of 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 like a curveball and a slider or, or a slider and a cutter or something like that. Um, yeah, but at 6,700, I think it's a pretty bad price to be chasing a decent outing from a guy that came in. It was 4,000. A lot of the, the risk was priced in when he was 4,000. That's not the case anymore when you got to pay another 2,700 for him. So give me the Mariners. Uh, you play pretty much everybody. Uh, I think they're all fine. And Julio got into a ball last night, 6,200 for him today, uh, 51 for Ty France. Gino Suarez made an egregious base running mistake last night. Um, 45, that's fine. It, it's whatever. He's in the three hole. Uh, Cal Raleigh hits great from both sides. 43 prefer him from the left side. Teoscar at 54. Um, this is a curious price bump for him. Not wild about this, but Jared Kelnick at 35. I think you can get to that for sure. Uh, Logan Gilbert on the mound for the Mariners. 8,500. This is an attainable price tag for him. Uh, median projection probably a bit stiff here in the early going, I would say. Uh, he, he has the upside, right? 23% K rate, 27% to lefties. So that's good because they're going to platoon against him with the Brewers. Um, a little bit lower against righties. So susceptible there in terms of average, 270 average allowed, 166 ISO and a 326 WOBA, 20% K rate to the right side, 35% hard contact to righties as well. Neutral ground ball to fly ball to both sides of the plate. He's not going to walk people, so that's good. Hard to stack against in that. Um, in that respect, but you could get to him with some power righties. Uh, we'll see what they want to do. Mostly the Brewers will try and platoon, but you can play a Will a Willie Adamas. You can play uh, William Contreras behind the plate as well. Not the greatest price tags for this particular matchup, but you can play them. Uh, Brian Anderson, you could play him as well. Third base and outfield eligibility at 3K. Bryce Terang's got a lot of pop. We'll see what they want to do with Mikey Brosseau. If you need a third baseman. Um, and they stick him in the lineup. He's got pop. Not 
the best side of the split for him, certainly. But Joey Weimer down here at 25, he can turn the lineup over for you as well. 45 for Yelich, not crazy about this particular matchup for him. And 4,500. Um, but he's okay. He's actually trying to steal some bases this year as well. So that might give us a little bit more value for Yelich. And he, you know, he's still Yelich. He's still leading off. Um, even though he's still he's striking out a crap load. Uh, Rowdy at 3,700. Price starting to come up on him is still fine and still playable. Garrett Mitchell at 3,200. Uh, price not coming up on him and still playable as well. So you can get to some Brewer stacks if you want. They disappointed last night. Not my favorite going after Gilbert here because he's better against the left side. But I think it's okay. Uh, he'll give up a some hard contact really to both sides of the plate and really not inducing a lot of soft contact. Just 14% to both sides in the soft contact and north of 30, kind of alarmingly so, 33% to lefties, 36% to righties. Uh, not on the barrel necessarily, as I mentioned, but some concern here uh, for a little bit of variance. At 8,500 though, I think it's a fine price tag. Early in the, in the early going here, uh, the Brewers only striking out about 22.5% clip so far against righties uh, creating at a 115 WRC plus there's the two there's the K rate 22 and a half walking at a full 11 percent so that's still coming down it used to be 13 percent even like a week ago or whatever but a 161 ISO and a 351 Woba they will hit for some power and some pop they'll get to baseball on a line 21 percent line drive rate really strong with a 33 percent aggregate hard hit rate so far so very dangerous matchup and and lineup to go after against righties so far this season so that would take me off of certainly 40 percent logan gilbert um not completely but i would still like to get you know a solid 20 percent i think um should he be in one in every five teams that you build tonight probably but uh the hard contact rate is very worrisome and this is a dangerous lineup so you can stack the brewers if you end up getting a lot of gilbert i would definitely build some some brewer stacks on the other side to to hedge some of that because there's still some variance with Gilbert and a, a young arm. Uh, okay, let's get to Atlanta and San Diego. I'm trying to blast through this as quickly as possible here. 10-4 on the mound for Strider you, while well, you're playing him. Uh, doesn't matter that he gave up three runs against the Reds last time and only went five innings. He still struck out nine. So um, he can still do this against the Padres in the early going here. The Padres striking out a boatload, 25%. Um, against against right-handers so far. So this is a pretty alarming number, not hitting for any power what, whatsoever yet. Um, and they are, let's see, at an aggregate 166 ISO, so it's better than I thought it'd be, to be quite honest, but creating at just a 98 WRC+, plus, walking a lot, 12.5% walk rate. It's the highest number on the day, split adjusted. So um, they're patient hitters still over here, and they're still missing Tatis. When they get, get him back, like, look out. But uh, that doesn't matter. Like, Strider today at, at 10-4, like, let's go. Uh, Four-seamer slider mix, when he develops a change, he's going to be just an absolute deadly starter. Not that he isn't already, but um, developing the third pitch, it, it would make him a top three arm in baseball. So uh, we, we're going to target him even at 10-4 and even as the most expensive arm on the day. Um, the, the median projection so far at pushing 22 points is still three points higher than everybody else. So you're, you're going to end up getting a lot once again, even in a traditionally bad matchup against the Padres. Um, Blake Snell on the other side, uh, 8,400. I'm not dealing with this at 80 at 27% ownership. Like the guy throws way too many pitches. He, he goes five innings, five and a third innings, every single start. And he throws 100 pitches every single start, and he walks 10% of guys every single start. It is so frustrating playing him, and I'm I'm not doing it at 27% ownership. Um, now, he does have strikeout stuff, and that's how we want to attack Atlanta. Uh, however, in the early going here against Atlanta, they're about average. And as a matter of fact, slightly above average with all the teams on the slate, just 23% K rate against lefties, super short sample, 180 PAs, but they've got early, 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 138 WRC, oh, 138, 138 WRC plus with an 879 OPS. That's a big, big number. 425 BABIP, but that's not sustainable, of course. Um, 389 WOBA, also probably not sustainable. So noisy, definitely, but hitting not yet for all of their power, 140 ISO. So, 
they're patient. Of course, they're going to walk a lot, and with a lefty on the mound, you can the damn near um, guarantee that Ronald Acuna is going to try and steal every single base that he can tonight. Um, he's going to take off, and and he's going to make it really difficult on Blake Snell. I do not want to deal with this with a pesky base runner and base stealer at the top of the lineup because it's going to he's going to worry Snell about Acuna when he's on the base paths more often. That it, like he's going to focus all of his energy on Acuna and trying to prevent him from scoring and stealing bases than he will on the hitters. And that's going to balloon the pitch count and balloon the walk rate. I'm not dealing with this at 30% ownership. Uh, if it burns me and you guys want to make fun of me um, and, and dunk on me, then, you know, by all means. But uh, because the, the K rate is still there. Uh, and, and Atlanta will still whiff. Um, to both sides, but I'm not, I'm not dealing with this at, with hard contact rates, north of 35% to both sides of the plate, soft contact rates, sub 15% to both sides of the plate, walk rate, huge. I mean, it, it's, there's way too much variance for my, for my liking at very high ownership on Blake Snell. I like playing him at low ownership, not at high ownership, even at a very attractive price tag. The, the variance is Starting to get priced in here at 8400 but not enough for my liking. I'd like him at 7400 before I really consider it at this ownership uh, against the Braves. So no thank you. Give me Atlanta. Give me Acuna, definitely. At 6100 I like this, as a matter of fact. He's going to be north of 6000 all season, and this is probably the bottom of the price range, to be quite honest. Austin Riley, 5500 He's going to push 6000 and pop through 6000 when he really, really gets going. But uh, it seems like four or five different times this season, it's been Acuna getting on, stealing a base, and then Austin Riley hitting a dinger after Matt Olson strikes out or something. So um, there's a good combination, a little one-two punch here, Acuna and Austin Riley. If you want to throw in an Ozzy Albies or a cheaper Vaughn Grissom uh, from the right side, that's fine. Marcel Azuna has not been a total corpse this year. However, I, I hate playing the guy, and he, I think he stinks. Um, so no thank you there at this, at this price tag of the eight hole. But if you want to run a... 2100 Eli White or a 2200 Kevin Pillar, uh, I think that's fine. Throw in Albies too. If you want a 4400, it's a good price tag. He'll hit from both sides. So I think it's fine. Give me the Braves a little bit in short stacks because I am worried that Blake Snell is going to strike out the whole country and make me look like an idiot. But no thank you. He throws too many pitches. It makes it way too hard on himself. Um, this is probably a, a top three pitcher in baseball on the most frustrating to watch scale. So Strider and the Braves only for me, uh, and I'm not going to go out of my way to be targeting Strider on the other side, even with like a Juan Soto or something like that who doesn't strike out. Uh, this is Strider we're talking about. He's got a 39% K rate. No, thank you. Okay, Cubs and the A's. We'll get through these last two games quickly. Um, Stroman on the mound I like. He's exhibited quite a bit of strikeout stuff uh, in his last really seven, eight starts going back to last year. Uh, going deep into games. And really good balanced arsenal here. Wish he'd throw the change up less because he doesn't really need it, to be quite honest. But um, yet we've always worried about, with Strowman, the the high, high ground ball rate. And it's still 2-1, to one, and that really suppressed a lot of the strikeout upside. Um, but he's displaying more K stuff. And at 8,800, I think it's okay. Um to get to him in, into some tournament pieces, market kind of agreeing. I think the projection, the median projection, may be a little elevated just in general for Strowman, but this is the the Athletics. I mean, they're bad, so it seems fine. And I think there might be a little bit of value we can eke out of Strowman here. If you want to get to 25% Strowman, I think it's. I don't think that's the worst play in the world, to be quite honest. Um, if if this ownership number drops throughout the day, then you know definitely sign me up. If it steams. You know, maybe come in at with the field or something like that. But I like Stroh here. Uh, is a decent matchup for him, and the A's are really not going to be able to beat him up all that often. Could they? I mean, sure. But uh, high ground ball rate here, great contact numbers, great suppression numbers to both sides of the plate, good K stuff to the lefties, which is nice. And yeah, it's workable. 20% K rate to righty. It's not great, but um, stays off the barrel and, and doesn't walk people. High ground ball rate, good strikeout stuff. So, yeah, sign me up. Um, A's on the other side. Well, Waldachuk gets the Cubs, and no thank you. Give me the Cubs again. Uh, I like their price tags again, and they're going to be totally ignored again. Um, Waldachuk has a major problem with right-handers early in his career. He's had trouble really spotting the fastball and working off of the four-seamer. And, and four-seamer's just bad. Slider's bad. Curveball's bad. Only serviceable pitch is a changeup, but if the four-seamer four is bad, the changeup is going to be bad. 
You know, so if he improved the four seamer command and really increased the value of this pitch for for himself, then the changeup would be markedly better and he'd be able to neutralize a lot of the right handed power. But he's not there yet. 180 total hitters, 38 and two thirds against righties, 304 average, 417 Woba, 310 ISO with a 20% K rate, 31.5% hard contact rate, not horrible right there, but 2.6 homers per nine, and that's because he's got an 11% aggregate barrel rate. Uh, it's very worrisome here for Ken Waldachuk. He just doesn't have it quite yet. I think he's a, an upside arm for the A's, um, but he really has to develop the four-seamer command and control in order to get him to work to these other pitches. Um, the slider, is of, of course, at, at this moment, he can't get lefties out either. You know, So um, very difficult and, and super raw arsenal for Ken Waldachuk so far. Uh, but they're just going to keep him in the rotation and let him go. Um, and as long as they're doing that, I'm stacking righties against him every single time. So give me Nico again, 4,400. He's been fantastic to start the season. Give me Dansby again. He's also been great. 5,600. Eh, whatever. It's playable price tag. Ian Happ's been fine. 51. He'll hit from both sides. Say Suzuki looks great. Coming back from the oblique at 52. This is fine. Trey Mancini was awful last night. He got a price bump, unfortunately, but he's still fine. Um, and this is a good bounce spot for him being so bad yesterday. Patty Wisdom hit 17 home runs in the last five days. Uh, 4500 unfortunately, today. Price bounced uh, a good 600 bucks from yesterday when he was 39. So, unfortunate. Cody Bellinger's been actually okay uh we'll when we've got more time we'll go into bellinger and the changes that he's made or appears to be trying to make uh but encouraging signs from bellinger we don't want to get too crazy because he's been bad for two and a half and three years but uh, making some adjustments deeper in counts and it might make might make him a little bit more playable regularly and maybe even against some lefties um, against Waldachuk, sure. Yeah, you want to play him in some stacks, okay. Not playing him as a one-off, but Waldachuk's not going to throw it by him, uh, even though Bellinger will swing and miss still a lot. So give me the Cubs again at very low ownership. Good values, and uh, I like this as a another kind of off-the-board tournament stack when it really shouldn't. Like, they won stuff for you last night. Um, no no athletics, but give me Stroh, give me the Cubs. I like correlations here, too. Okay, last game, Tyler McGill on the mound against the Dodgers. No thank you. Um, big, big problems with left-handers. 301 average allowed, 379 Woba and a 211 ISO, 18% K rate with a 1.8 homers per nine. I'm not dealing with that. We saw Freddie and Max Muncy both get into David Peterson last night. Uh, we talked about his problems with left-handed power. Well, Here's more problems with left-handed power. It doesn't matter who's throwing it to you. Uh, these are what the numbers are saying. So uh, give me some more Freddie. Give me some more Max Muncy. Price tag coming up on Muncy a little bit, unfortunately, because he just hits a homer every night. Uh, Chris Taylor was awful last night, and that's the variance you get with Chris Taylor. And I, I don't know what, like, yeah, he plays decent defense. He's got some pop, but... Man, he stinks. <laughs> uh, he strikes out so much, and he is very frustrating to watch. He's got a high, high chase rate. Really frustrating there. Um, JD's price popped a little bit, 4700 Not crazy about going after him tonight, um, or really with any righties. So give me some short lefty stacks here. Uh, most likely just one-off Freddie Freeman, one-off Max Muncy. You want to play Mookie? Yeah, I mean, you can play him against everybody. It doesn't, doesn't really matter, but... Not the greatest matchup here against Tyler McGill, who's pretty good against righties. 179 average, 232 ISO, or Woba, excuse me, and a 112 ISO with a 31% K rate to the right side of the plate. A little bit more hard contact for sure, um, you know, but nothing terribly worrisome because the suppression numbers are so good. Uh, if you want to get to some Dodgers again, go ahead. You can always stack the Dodgers, uh, but it most likely be short stacks for me here today. Uh, this offense not really been great. You know, they're... Pretty average so far. Um, once they once they start heating up, though, this is still the Dodgers. So I'm going to need a little more than 17 games of subpar performance for the Dodgers to really uh, to really convince me that um, you know they're a, a, bad, a bad baseball team or something like that. Uh, Kershaw on the mound for them, 10-1. Uh, it's okay. Uh, this is still Kershaw, and Kershaw's numbers act actually. I mean, we look at every every number over here. Um, it, and they're all great. The only one that really leaves a little bit on the table is probably the K rate to the lefties at just 21.5%. Um, but, it, but it's all fantastic. 
Still not walking people. Still sub-5% walk rate. Still throwing strike one. 68% strike one rate. 27% K rate. Suppression numbers still awesome. Strand rate still awesome. I mean, it, just everything. Barrel rate, staying off the barrel. Hard contact numbers still excellent. Uh, it's still Kershaw. And healthy Kershaw is still one of the best arms in the game. And he's been doing it forever. Um, and this is really, really good to see after having dealt with a lot of injuries over the last several seasons. Hopefully he can stay healthy this year. Um, but we can target him in general. But this is an elevated price tag, and this is also the Mets. The Mets, as of now, 275 PAs against lefties so far this season, 19% K rate, 110 WRC+, plus with an 11% walk rate. Patient team over here. Very good hitters, good situational, professional hitters. Frankie Lindor, Pete Alonso, um, Starling Marte at the top of the lineup. Very good hitters over here, and they're going to make some bats difficult on Kershaw, even though this is Kershaw. Uh, at 10-1, I think he's a fine tournament play to get off of some of the early, uh, the big inflated ownership on, I mean, it's not inflated in a bad way, but uh, ballooning ownership on Strider. If you want to get down to some Kershaw at 15%, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I think it's fine in tournaments because the numbers are still there. However, like I said, I don't, we don't want to go after the Mets all too often. Um, we saw it last night. Uh, Dustin May's got good stuff, not a lot of strikeout stuff, and sure enough, they, they beat him around pretty good. So um, Kershaw is markedly different, of course, but um, that's the kind of offense we're going we're gonna to run into in, in, with, the, with the Mets over here. Not a lot of raw power upsides. They're not going to win tournaments for you all that often. Is it, as of last year, um, you know, these were the – I mean – their numbers are in the early going here, hitting for a little bit more power than they did last year. But a 333 Woba and a, you know, a solid 20% line drive rate, and, and there's the 19% K rate that I mentioned. So um, sticky team here, and they're going to be able to create and, and put together good professional at-bats. So uh, not the best spot for Kershaw, but it, it's a fine tournament play. And I'll probably have some come in somewhere near the field, I would guess. If this drops to sub 10%, then yeah, give me give me 20%. Try and get get some leverage on Kershaw. I like that a lot. Uh, but mostly the Dodgers here, um, targeting Tyler McGill on the mound. His price his price tag is just too high. He does have some K stuff against the right side. So if they go righty heavy here, uh, I think it's all right to maybe throw in a a, a couple of Tyler McGill teams because um, we saw last night that and the start before that Justin Steele and David Peterson can still pick through the lineup a little bit, and they've got some case stuff. But um, in general, probably no thank you. I'm still not ready to, to start attacking the Dodgers every night. Uh, okay, so we kept this one a little bit shorter, um, right around an hour, I think. Uh, so that's good. So let's quickly go over stacks. Um, in the, uh, the early Angels and Yankee game, give me the Yankees. I like the Yankees. Uh, against Josie Suarez, he's not been great. He's a fly ball pitcher, at Yankee Stadium, uh, with some susceptibility to righties. Give me the, give me the Yanks. Give me Baltimore. Give me a little bit of Washington as well. I think that's okay going after Dean Kramer. Probably not in full stacks. Uh, we're worried about upside there in tournaments, but uh, some playable one-off pieces definitely. Good prices over there for like a Joey Manessas, Dom Smith. Uh, Minnesota and Boston. I think you can play pretty much everybody in this game. There's variance on the mound with both of these arms, but. The price tags are attainable for both of these arms on the mound as well. So I think you can go after these offenses if you'd like. It's only 55 degrees in Boston tonight or something. So um, this decent pitching weather, good hitters park, and variance on the mound. So, you know, play everybody if you want. Uh, Texas and Kansas City, um, no, yeah, 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 very little Nathan Eovaldi for me. I like going after the Royals, but not with Eovaldi, man. Like, he just gives up too much power. It's all on the barrel, and it's all over the wall, so no thank you. I don't like stacking against Brad Keller in general. He doesn't, Even though he didn't strike anybody out, he's got a huge ground ball rate, so less enthused about Texas as well. Um, if anything, it'd be like, I don't know, some Royals. Give me, give me definitely some... Um, Vinny Pascantino and, and some of these lefties. Kyle Isbell, I like, 28 uh, in the five hole. Arizona and St. Louis, probably just St. Louis here, I think. I don't want to go after Jordan Montgomery, but I also am not super stoked about a $9,500 price tag on him um, today in this particular matchup. I really like Dre, but I think the price tag is a little elevated for him. If they let him go five innings, he could strike out seven here, and that could be a valuable piece. So if you want to get to a couple of Dre teams, don't think it's bad. 
he's got he's got enough stuff to uh, to navigate to a cold Cardinals lineup overall. But um, overall, mostly a kind of a write-off for me. Uh, Toronto and Houston, give me Toronto definitely uh, against Jose Urquidy. I like that. I don't like the prices. Uh, give me some one-off Houston pieces. Always Jordan. All we always play Jordan. Uh, and really no pitching here. Definitely no pitching in the in the Pittsburgh Colorado game. Offense only. You got to figure it out. Milwaukee and Seattle. Give me mostly the Mariners here, I think. But you can play both um, Logan Gilbert and Milwaukee if you'd like to. I think those are viable tournament plays as well. Atlanta and San Diego. Mostly just the Braves here. I'm not touching Blake Snell at at 30% ownership. Um, if it burns me, it burns me, and sometimes it does burn me, but, uh, it, I, I don't like doing it. Uh, I hate watching the guy pitch, and, um, you know, maybe that's, uh, one of my biases, I, I suppose, but give me some of the Braves. Um, Cubs in Oakland, I, I like everybody, but all of the Cubs, just as I did last night with Wisniewski, um, give me all the Cubs again against Waldachuk. He has, he has serious problems to the opposite uh, side of the or opposite handed hitters, I suppose. And Mets and Dodgers, mostly the Dodgers. Uh, maybe a Tyler McGill, probably not. Good bit of Kershaw, I think. And and some lefty power against Tyler McGill. Uh, okay, so that's it. Sorry that the video is so late today. Uh, once again, this was take two and blame my dog. Um, we'll have projection and ownership updates pushed to the site throughout the afternoon. Good luck if, if you're punting, and we'll catch you guys tomorrow for probably a split slate, as is normal on a, on a Wednesday. Good luck.